and welcome back to my identity channel or welcome to my identity channel happy to have you here again today's topic is language and uh, of course many of the points that I will discuss today have been mentioned also in the videos before because everything is is connected so the language is connected to the country and to the culture so um, yeah maybe not everything is brand new today but this also is important to understand exactly that everything is, is connected. I, I hope we all agree that um, having more than one language available is, is something positive, it's good. It uh, doesn't help to just speak one language. I am aware that um, mostly people who are English speaking um, they can somehow travel around the world and, and somehow um, travel just with one language because it is this international language by now. But also if you speak English in almost every country I guess people will be just happy to see that you somehow try to to learn their language or to respect their language. It's, it's, it's a question of respect. Um, even if <laughs> I remember in, in being in Portugal and I was there for three weeks and I didn't learn any, any Portuguese before, but uh, of course speaking Italian and French and some Spanish I, I was hoping with my romantic uh, roots to somehow learn something being in there. So I tried to to learn some bits from from the Portuguese language and um, I have never seen so many people speaking so many languages as in Portugal. Um, the the <laughs> The most fascinating guy was a cook in, in uh, Lisbon who was speaking nine languages. And those that I knew, um, there wasn't any accent. The point was, I was there, I was trying to, to, to learn some Portuguese. Uh, I had some sentences prepared and whenever I started speaking, they would answer in Portuguese, but it was so quick that I didn't understand the word. So I tried to ask them to, to just um, respond slower and that was the moment when they switched to any other language, be it um, English or French or Italian or whatever um, they thought would be my language or some even asked. But really it, it wasn't possible to learn any new sentence in Portuguese in three weeks. It, they were too quick and too good. I have heard a few times by now that um, speaking several languages or expecting your child to speak several languages would overwhelm their, their brain. And there is this legend saying that uh, children growing up with, um, with two or more different languages, they learn their languages um, later, they, it takes them longer to learn them and um, they are not as good at in school, which I can't prove. Um, I experienced the complete contrary and there are a few uh, studies, scientific studies in the meantime that, that prove the contrary. Why is that? Because the more you learn, the more your brain develops. So um, as far as, as long as you respect, you know, the, the, the boundaries of a young brain. So you, you shouldn't overwhelm it, but growing up with two, three different languages for a child is, is if there is a consistency, if one person speaks one language and the child knows what to expect and grows with this language and this person, uh, there is nothing overwhelming for it and, the, and the, the, the brain cells will develop with it. So my experience is that children are much quicker in learning and of course their horizon opens up.
by learning different languages. What I have heard a few times already is that strangely the tone of voice uh, changes depending on the language you are speaking. And I realize it by myself when I speak Italian, my voice gets up, it becomes much higher. Um, in German it's lower and in English it's even lower. Uh, I don't know what this depends on, if it is, you know, because Italian is my child language and German came later, but um, English I learned before I learned German, but I used it then after a certain age, mainly for business, so maybe I just wanted to to give some, uh, some uh, professional um, appeal. I don't know. And I heard this from other people too. I'm, I'm not sure why this is, but this also shows that your personalities are influenced, or your, your identity is one, but you have different aspects of personality that are linked to a language. And this, of course, is very interesting for me too. And as Rensch mentioned right now, um, when, when a child grows up with different languages. I, I mentioned this in, in the interview with my daughter, you shouldn't speak a language which is not yours, which doesn't come from your heart, from your soul, which is not yours. Um, and she didn't understand why. Um, and I think because the point is, and this was mentioned in one of the comments to, to my last video, um, thank you Marianne, Marianne for that, I guess uh, she said um, children expect you to be th true, so your truth is your language and if I would speak English with my daughter in private conversations and now she is she is a grown up so it doesn't make a difference but when she was a child I wouldn't speak to her in English because English is not my true personality it is some it's a language that I learned afterwards and as, as that I use as a language but it is not my identity it's not my personality and what Marianne wrote was um, that children need consistency and I fully agree to that. So if you speak in one language to your child and your husband speaks to the child in another language, that's fine. And of course the child understands both languages and you can switch them also, but normally you should be consistent and speak to your child in your language and your husband should speak to the child in his language or change it. It's not a question of gender. I must admit I got a bit mad. <laughs> um, a few years ago a German politician um, stated that um, the families coming from other countries to Germany at home should speak German which in theory I understand because you have to learn the language of your new country and you have to somehow um, adapt to the culture and to the language and fine, perfect. But I always ask myself if this German politician with his family would go to Beijing, let's say, does he really think that he would speak with his own German family, his German wife and his German children in Chinese? Of course not. So yes, you want to try to, to support your children to learn the new language, possibly also at home, but this family speaking, this supporting, this love language is your originary language and not the new one. So it, it also has to, it always has to be somehow balanced. What is the right amount of your, your original language? What is your family language? And how far can you go to help your children learn the new language that you also have to learn first? 
that is also important to, to remember. So not everybody knows, even the adults, know the languages. So at the beginning you go maybe to China, let's take that as an example, and you will start talking English. When are you starting to talk Chinese in your surrounding? It will take even adult a few months, I guess. Um, will you speak Chinese at home? You won't. Maybe if your children start talking Chinese because they go to school and they start learning it, you will have some additional talks in Chinese within the family at home, but this will not become your family language. A funny story um, within that context is that I always, always thought which is your your mother language, which is your yeah, mother tongue, I guess that's, that's the correct. Um, and I thought it's the one where you count in. I'm sure all of us experience the situation that you go to a uh, Italian or Turkish restaurant and you order and you eat and then you pay and um, the server is, is starting to count, maybe in former times because now everything is, is digital, but in former times they were writing up the, the amounts and then make, they make the sum and then they started adding in their mother tongue. And I thought the language in, in which you count is your mother tongue. And for me this is valid because I, if you ask me in, in any language what is 7 by 8, I'm just, I don't know. Um, so I have to switch first to Italian and then I know the answer because I learned it in Italian and when my daughter was uh, little she went to school here in, in Switzerland, German speaking Switzerland and I, I tried to, to help her to learn all those, uh, those countings and um, as she had to answer in German at school I decided that I had to do it in German with her. So she counts in German even if her mother language still is Italian. So even that is not the criteria to decide which one is your mother tongue. But um, I guess the point is you don't have to decide. There is no one forcing you or at least you should make sure that no one forces you to say, to state, what is my mother language. It is maybe differing, different from, from by the situation, by the person, by the country you are in. Are you a tourist? Which one is appropriate? Um, maybe it changes also by, with the time. So my, my, my mother language is still Italian, but um, I'm much more proficient in, in German by now. So the, all the thoughts that I'm developing here in, in my videos um, are based on a book that I'm writing and I'm writing it in German. Why is that? Because I, I went away from Italy um, when I was a teenager. And my language skills in Italian, unfortunately, even if I continued to read, all the literature in Italian, um, they stop there. So my, my language level in Italian is the one of a teenager. While my German, which started developing then, but you know, went through the whole school, high school, university and business and so on, um, it is more an adult and a ed more educated language. So writing a book about serious things. Maybe if I would write a, a children's book, it would be in Italian, but writing a serious book about identity, I, I'm doing it in German. I would not do it in English. As we speak about language, I think we also have to, to, to talk about dialects. Dialects, in my opinion, are very important and they are an expression of, 
of being part of a community. And this is also reflected in, in several areas, not only in, in Italy. I, I hear it from, from uh, Austria and Switzerland and Germany too. Um, when, when you are in a village and you, you get to know somebody, the first thing they ask, or at least maybe the third, but very quickly they ask you, whom are you of? So to understand your your connection to to the village, which which family are you part of? Which is a nice question. Um, so if if you speak a dialect, then um, it is showing your connection to a community. And I sadly, when uh, I grew up, my father that he had to learn Italian as he had married my mother and they were living in Italy and he learned Italian, but um, he didn't learn the local dialect that was spoken in the village of my mother. And in our area, you, whenever you are together with a family or friends of the village, you use the dialect. And only with foreigners, then you start using the high language, high Italian. Which is the thing that is different here in Switzerland? Here in Switzerland, they use the dialect and they try to impone it, impose it on, on strangers too. So they maybe talk to you for 15 minutes in their dialect. And then at the end, they ask you if you understand the dialect, which of course not everybody does. And after 15 minutes, you have lost people. So um, I, I think dialect is, is very important as long as you use it with your family, with your friends, with your um, people of your community. And um, to come back to my father, he didn't understand the dialect. And um, so he, he decided that I was not allowed to use the dialect because he didn't like that my grandmother and my grandmother and my mother and I would talk with each other and he wouldn't understand the word, which I somehow can understand. But in that case, I would um, presume that there is a trust which he didn't have, which is another problem. So unfortunately, I do understand the local dialect in my home village, but I don't speak it, which to be honest, I'm very sad about. And thus, I couldn't also pass it to my daughter because she she is uh, going to the village since birth every year, but she is there for a few days every year, which is not enough to to learn the dialect. So unfortunately, even her is even she is not not speaking it. One thing I I already mentioned is um, that your mother language is the one or often is said to be the one in which you dream. And there also, I, <laughs> I, um, I'm not so sure about it because I experienced that um, since we live in Switzerland and as mentioned, I don't speak the local dialect. I continue to speak the, the high language German, but it happens to me to dream in Swiss dialect. And also to dream, and in this dream, I am speaking in Swiss dialect, which is very strange, but it happens. I, I could also imagine that how quickly you learn a new language because you went to a new, new country um, also depends on the reasons why you left your country. Because if, if you left it based on your decision, maybe you got a new job in a new country. So you go there with your family and you know you are positive about being in the new country and thus you're positive about learning the new language. But in all cases where you had to escape your mother country, maybe due to war or to poverty or whatever reason you had and you come to a new country, 
the, the your position or the position of this new country in 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 yourself is different and then you maybe still love your mother country but you are thankful if you have some some you can reach some safety in the new country so in best case you are thankful if they treat you correctly so one aspect is why did you leave your mother country and the other aspect is how are you treated in the new country so if they accept you and if they allow you to integrate yourself this is completely different from arriving somewhere being treated as an unwanted refugee and or maybe um, somebody who is stealing the, their jobs and um, taking advantage of their social system and social security so all of that gives you the the feeling of not being wanted of course and then it is part of our human nature I guess to to try to feel some security and to feel accepted so being within those two countries we have to look at the original country and the new country and which culture does give you more safety and this will be the one where you focus more on where you you try to be more um, because it gives you safety nobody wants to feel unsafe and insecure of course right so these were my brain bits how i call them about uh, language in regard to identity for today. I hope you liked my thoughts. As usual, I would very much love you to comment and tell me your story, tell me your thoughts, what you think about what I said. Um, do you think it's right? Do you have a completely different opinion, a different point of view? I, I would really love to see your comments in, in that regard. And uh, if you like this video, please leave me a like and um, please subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. And in any case, as always, be kind.